a question that I don't know. That's why finding stuff out is the name of the show. So just give me a shout and we'll figure it out with the help of some friends and the fun never ends. On finding stuff out, finding stuff out, finding stuff out. That's what it's all about. Yeah. I just found out something shocking. Are you sitting down? Here's a question from Kayla. It would be fun to have a tail. Why can't humans have a tail? Well, guess what? The short answer is, we might. <laughs> I've never seen a person with a tail, unless you're all hiding them under your clothes. So how is it possible for people to have tails? I've asked some experts to help me get to the bottom of this mystery and I'll find out the answer by the end of the show. But for now, let's get some... You all would like to have a tail, right? Yeah! If you could have any type of tail, what would it be? It would be a rooster tail, because I can wake people up at 4 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Pretty early. A beaver tail, because I like to swim and it helps them swim better. I would have a kangaroo tail, because while it be hopping, I could have my own private roller coaster. <laughs> it would be a dog tail, because I like dogs, and they wiggle it, and I like wiggling. <laughs> <laughs> a lemur tail, because it's weird looking. And um, lemurs stick their tails up so that other lemurs can find out where they are. It would be like a monkey tail because they could like wrap around things and grab them. Like this. <laughs> Mine would be a polar bear tail, like this, because it camouflages and I like camouflage. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's pretty cool. I wish I had a tail. Oh, also, I heard these stories about girls with fish tails. I saw a mermaid on my last voyage. She had silky brown hair and a tail like a fish. She looked just like this. Oh, a girl like a fish is every sailor's wish. A girl with a tail who can swim like a whale. Back in the day of pirate ships, sailors thought they saw mermaids in the sea. But today, we know mermaids don't exist. Some experts think what the sailors really saw were manatees. Manatees are mammals. Like us, they have to come up to the top of the water for air. And they do have fishy tails, but manatees don't exactly look like mermaids. But back in the days when sailors believed in mermaids, only guys could be sailors. So maybe they just hadn't seen a girl in a long time. Hmm, sure does look like my Aunt Gladys though. Why are tails useful? Well, Evelyn, if I had a tail, I could sure think of a lot of uses for it. Harrison, clean your room! Sure, Mom. <laughs> ah. There's not one simple answer, there's lots of answers, because animals use their tails for different things. And so many animals have tails. Let's see. Porcupines, beavers, elephants, lions, dinosaurs, pigs, dogs, foxes, rabbits, lizards, armadillos, cats, squirrels, pigs? Oh wait, I already said pigs. Ah! You're gonna make my head explode. To find out what animals really use their tails for, please welcome my first special guest of the day, animal expert, Jennifer Sear Devine. Whoa, is that a real skunk? <laughs> it absolutely is. This is Iris, a five-month-old striped skunk that was found orphaned in the wild. And she now stays at the Eco Museum Zoo where we both work, actually. But <laughs> she's not gonna stink up my attic, is she? No, you really don't have to worry about that. Not only is she a trained striped skunk, she's also being desented. So you really don't have to worry about it. She's an educational animal, so we actually bring her into classrooms and for special activities. So really, your attic's okay. <laughs> So Evelyn was wondering why tails are useful and specifically, why is a skunk's tail useful? Now a skunk's tail is pretty useful because just the coloration and the fact that it's bushy is a warning sign to other animals that they have to stay away. Now if we still ignore that warning mm -hmm. and we continue to get close to the striped skunk, 
Well, that's when they lift their tail and spray that awful smelling musk liquid. Oh, don't want that because it's going to smell bad. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> it's very, very strong. And most animals, even the skunks themselves, don't like to have that smell near them. Right, so they use their tail to protect themselves from predators, like as a warning, right? Exactly. Can I touch it? <laughs> absolutely. There you go. Oh, it's kind of... That's soft. It's a little bit rigid, it's yeah. Like straw. So she'll automatically, as soon as we touch her hind She's leg, she'll lift her tail a little bit. Right. There are actually other animals that also use their tail as a warning sign, such as beavers. You might know that beavers yeah. will smack the surface of the water to make a loud sound that scares away any potential predators. So what kind of animal is this? Well, this is another one of the educational animals from the Eco Museum Zoo. It's what we call an American marten. And as you can see, they have quite a long <laughs> tail. And what do you think it's used for? I don't know, like what is this tail useful for? Well, have you ever noticed squirrels and chipmunks going along the electrical wire, sort of like yeah. type rope walkers? Usually? Yeah. Well, these guys have a tail for agility and balance as well, just like squirrels and chipmunks. Okay. So when they're climbing up into trees, or standing on a long branch, <laughs> jumping from branch to branch, they need to be able to have good agility and good balance in order to do so. Right. <laughs> Would you like to touch her? Sure. Can she I has quite it? lovely soft, soft fur. And the tail, you can see, is quite soft <laughs> as well. <laughs> Whoa. They'll usually hunt on the ground but they right. do climb up into the trees, especially to get away from predators. So what would happen if it lost its tail? Well, like any animal that's supposed to have a tail, she would have a lot of difficulty without her tail. Um, so this, of course, she wouldn't have as much agility or as much balance when she's walking along the branches, hopping from tree to tree or branch to branch. Right. So tails for such animals are extremely important. <laughs> So what kind of turtle do we have here? <laughs> well, this is actually what we call a common snapping turtle. Now, if you look at his head, there are bumps everywhere, scales everywhere. But even down on his tail, there are scales everywhere as well. well. That's a really long tail for a turtle. I wonder what that's useful for. You're right. Common snapping turtles have very long tails. And actually, what's neat is the tail is actually armored. So they have these very large scales that stick out of the tail. This is kind of like armor on the tail end. So although the head end is protected by that beak, that right. sharp he beak, can snap. and he can snap with that beak, the tail end is protected a little bit by these extra scales. Right. So these guys do look very prehistoric, and they've been around since before the time of the dinosaurs. Whoa. They've changed very little since then. So their tail is a good way for them to protect that, that hind end. There we go. Go, turtle, You'll also go. notice this common snapping turtle will use its tail almost like a third leg. Oh, really? Like an extra limb to help lift its shell off the ground in the wild. It also uses that tail to go wandering around in the mud in the bottom of rivers and the bottom of marshes and wetlands. So pretty practical tail all in all, so right? So it's a useful tail. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, thank you for teaching me about tails and for being on my show. Well, thank you so very much for having us. It was an absolute pleasure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, here's another question. It's from Noah. Why do some animals have a pom-pom and some have a tail? Pom-pom tails are really cool. And I found out there's actually a reason that rabbits have them instead of long tails. Carnivores. That's what you call animals that eat other animals. Rabbits can signal other rabbits with their tails. Watch out! Someone's trying to make us into their lunch! Aw, uh, don't worry. No one's gonna make you into a sandwich, Mr. Fluffums. I thought of another reason why a pom-pom tail could be useful. It's time for... My Great Challenge! To put nature to the test, today I have two predator challengers, Giacomo Roar. and Trey. And we also have four prey. The first two are Tatiana and Taya. They have short little bunny tails. And what if bunnies had long tails? We have Sierra and Xavier, the experimental bunny rabbits. <laughs> so today's challenge is for the predator to catch as much prey as they can in one minute. But there's a catch. You have to catch them by their tails. Got it? Sure. OK. Are you guys all ready? Yes. yes. Okay, Trey, you're up first. Everybody get to their starting positions. And remember, you have to be fast to catch your prey. And you guys have to be fast if you want to get away. Okay, ready? Set, go! Here comes Trey, and he looks hungry. Oh, Sierra almost got out. These bunnies are pretty quick. <laughs> 
Oh, one's out. He's got one. Run away! Maybe someone else is an easier lunch to catch. Okay, who's it gonna be? Nope. She's a quick little bunny. Oh, so close. Our predator's having a tough time. Oh, he's got another one. Five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Okay, that's it. Okay, so Trey got two tails, and now it's Jackie Mo's turn. Get into your ready position. Are you ready? Set, go! Let's see if Giacomo can beat Trey's score. Oh, almost got one tail already. Oh, yes! Giacomo's got one tail. Almost has two. Oh, so close. Giacomo's a fierce competitor. I'll get you, you little bunny, you! Almost, yes! Giacomo has another tail. And he has some time. Oh, so close! Oh! <laughs> run, Frey, run! This bunny really doesn't want to be a snack. Slow down, lunch! Ten seconds remaining. Gotcha! That's a third tail for Giacomo. Can you get the last Frey? Ooh! Oh, yes, I think he's got it. No. Nope. Okay, time's up. Giacomo, you got three tails and Trey only got two, so it looks like you're the winner. Wow. <laughs> so what was the hardest part about the challenge? I think it was getting the smaller tails off. Smaller tails were harder to get? And what do you think was the hardest, Trey? Taking off the smaller tails. Why do you think that was the hardest part? Because they're smaller to fit my hand. Right, it's harder to get your hand around the small ones? Yeah. So the other reason animals like rabbits have pom-pom tails may be because it makes it harder for predators to catch them. Well, congratulations to Giacomo, you're the winner, but really all of you are winners because you did it for science and you showed that a shorter tail is harder to catch than a longer tail. Thanks for playing. <laughs>
help out, please welcome animal expert, Seth Falk. Well, I think I can help you out with that question. Whoa, I mentioned a kangaroo and there one is. Yes, this is Jasmine. She's a red kangaroo and she's just a baby. <laughs> can I pet it? Absolutely. She is used to people because she lives at a zoo. But in the wild, you would never want to pat a wild kangaroo. You would scare them and they would give you a good kick. Like that. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whoa. Kickboxing is natural to kangaroos. When they fight, they can actually balance their entire body on their tail, kicking forward with their powerful legs. Ouch! So, how does its tail help it jump? The tail gives the kangaroo a big boost, sort of like a pogo stick. It helps it jump really high. Just watch how she can sit up all the way on her tail for a snack. Oh, there we go. Now we're doing a good one. Oh, see? You're so good. So smart. What's so special about the kangaroo's tail? Well, this tail is full of lots of strong muscles which help them hop really high. It also is a place where they store food and water because they're from the desert and you never know when your next meal is. So it's like a stomach, but in their tail. It's a lot like a camel's hump, where camels also store food and water in their humps. Whoa. Very cool. Well, thanks for helping me find stuff out. No problem, thanks. If you don't stop eating, you'll get a taily ache. Now here's a question from Hannah. Is there a bone in an animal's tail? Well, Hannah, to find out the answer to your question, I'm here with my friend Hans Larsen in this museum. Hey. Pleasure to be here. So, Hans is a paleontologist, and part of his job is to find out why animal bones are the way they are. So Hannah was wondering, do animal tails have bones? Lots of animals have tails. And all animals with backbones and bones inside them have tails, and all those tails have bones in them. Okay, great. So what do we have here? Well, here's a little quiz that I set up. And so guess what the animals are and where their tail is. Okay, so I'm gonna guess this guy's obviously a snake, but like the whole thing is a tail, isn't it? Well, um, it might look like a tail, but actually the tail for snakes is really short. This guy, the tail starts right here and just goes to there. Right, oh, right where like the ribs stop? Yep. Okay, I'm gonna guess this guy uh, is a cat. Exactly, this and, is the house cat. And this one just looks like a baby cat, like a smaller cat. It looks like identical. Yep, it's so this is the cat and that's a skunk. Oh, oh, that's a skunk. Totally different animals, but they kind of look similar. The tail for cats is really used for lots of jumping and running around. Right, and I know the skunk uses its tail for signaling. Yep. Okay, and then we have this big one. And uh, the tail's pretty flat. And oh, it has the beaver teeth. I'm gonna guess it's beaver. This is a beaver. Is that like a rat? Well, it's a muskrat. Oh, okay. And But it's closely related to the beaver, and both of them swim in the water, and the muskrat tail is long and skinny, like a rat. Uh -huh. That's why it's called the muskrat. Yeah. But the beaver tail is a beaver tail. It's flat. It's like a paddle. And what about this guy? His tail is really short. So this is a really cool animal. It's called the badger. Yeah. They dig burrows. They spend a lot of time underground. So that's why the tail is short, because they don't really use it? Exactly. And this thing is like a chipmunk or something. Close, it's a squirrel monkey. <laughs> a squirrel monkey. So like they have this really long tail and they're like, is it just like a smaller monkey? Well, it's a mini monkey, but this tail is really important because they use it for climbing, they use it for jumping to keep balance. Right. They use it for talking to each other. But monkeys are like really closely related to us and they have this long tail and we don't really have a tail at all. We don't really need a tail, but what if we want a tail? That's what Kayla wants to know. It would be fun to have a tail. Why can't humans have a tail? And the big answer is... We do have tails. I knew it! But how come I don't have a tail? Am I the only person without a tail? I can assure you, Harrison, you have a tail. I don't. I can't see it. It's back here somewhere. I can't see it. Come on, Harrison. I'll show you where your tail is. Okay. In us, our tail is right here. That's our tail? It's tiny, I didn't even know we had that. Well, it's really tiny and it only holds a couple muscles in it. So we don't do much with our tails. And what about this guy? He doesn't have much of a tail either. This is our gorilla, which we call George. And his tail is also really short. Right, how come the tail's stick in and not out? Because they would get in the way because we stand up. Right. And I'll show you why. So sure. pretend that you're an animal. So like a dog or something. 
So if you had a tail, it would come out your back like this. Weird. And what about if I was standing up? Where would your tail be? I guess it would stick right into the ground. It would be in the way. So I guess it'd be a problem. Ah, oh, I've always wanted a real tail. Ours aren't very exciting. But if you want to find your own tail, here's how. Uh-oh. Do try, try this, this at, at home. home. To find your tail, mm -hmm. you just take your hand, right. put it on your back, and slide it all the way down to where it stops. Right. Oh, I can barely feel it there, but one time I fell and it really hurt. Yeah, the tail, even though it's really small, is also really delicate too. So I guess even though our tails don't stick out and we can't see them, we should still take care of them. Right, and we can even break them. Do you think science will ever allow me to grow a tail like a monkey or something? Sorry, Harrison, you'll never have a long tail. Oh, I guess I'll never be wagging my tail. Thanks for watching Finding Stuff Out. On the other hand, though, it would be kind of weird if I was the only one with a tail and nobody else had one. But maybe if we all had tails, that would be OK. Yeah, it'd be hard to drive a car. Yeah, it would be hard to drive a car. It'd be hard to do a lot of things with a tail. <laughs> tails do avoid a scorpion who's annoyed. It pinches and it stings. I hate those things. Tails do avoid a skunk with lots of stings down there. A rattlesnake who says beware. Tails do avoid a dinosaur with spikes or any type of animal whose other side can bite. Tails to avoid. Tails to avoid.